and maybe we'll pause the uh, the um, clip, the video clip, for a second because we have another uh, question from our audience, and and the question was, um, and and this feeds into what you were talking about, Dr. Uh, Lepukin. What are the possible complications of this procedure, and and one of them, of course, is is pain, um, pain that we all agree is less than with an open procedure, um, but maybe you can uh, just briefly tell us what what we uh, uh, do to help control pain afterwards and uh, then well, talk that, about that, some of the other complications. That might actually be easier for me to answer because historically we used to use a lot of epidurals which involved uh, Sergey and his department but with these incisions they're so small that we don't really feel like we need that and I believe and I'll let Sergey comment but I believe our anesthesia <laughs> colleagues also feel that we don't need an epidural for this particular position. Mm -hmm. So we instead use preemptive anesthesia prior to the surgery. The patient is giving a long-acting uh, narcotic with a little sip of water that lasts for about 12 hours. And then we instill uh, local anesthesia to the what's called the intercostal nerves and the nerves around the ribs. And then post-operatively, we often supplement their anesthesia with a balance between opioids and non-steroidals um, almost all the time by mouth, not by IV. And frequently, we are able to get the tube out so quickly post-op, usually that night or the next day, that their pain really is minimal. And many patients go home just on the, non, the what we call non-steroidals, like a Motrin or an Advil, and or Tylenol, and, and not opioids. 